the Benedictines, are members of the Christian religion of monks, nuns, and sisters following the rule of Saint Benedict, in 480-547 AD. It is an order founded by, Saint Benedict. At Subiaco, then at Monte Cassino, south of Rome, and elsewhere in Italy, in about 529 AD. The name Benedictine, evokes the name of Saint Benedict, who lived in the 5th and 6th centuries, together with all those who have been inspired, by the tradition of the Benedictine spirituality. Since then, the Order of Saint Benedict, OSB, has thrived through the centuries. In 1893, Pope Leo XIII, established a study house in Rome, called Saint Anselmo, and created the Benedictine Confederation, with an abbot, primate as the head, for purpose of central organization. The abbot primate, is elected by the Congress of Abbots. The Benedictine Confederation numbers over 7,500 monks, in about 400 monasteries, belonging to 19 different congregations, with regional differences, particular missions, or specific spiritual traditions. Over 13,000 nuns, and sisters, belong to the order. The Benedictine scholars, rediscovered the liturgical life, of the early church. They influenced the liturgical movement, which prepared the reforms, of the Second Vatican Council. Most monasteries continue to attract Christians, who want to spend a quiet time in prayer, who seek spiritual advice, or who simply want to live alongside the monks, nuns, and sisters for a few days. The Benedictines work closely with the Cistercians, and the Trappists orders, which also follow the rule of Saint Benedict. The Prince of Peace Benedictine Abbot Goni, in Limuru Kenya, belongs to the missionary Benedictine congregation of Saint Ottilian, founded in 1884 by Andreas Amrhein, who was originally from the Buranese congregation belonging to the Benedictine Confederation. The Saint Ottilian congregation is a worldwide religious community, with over 19 independent monasteries and a total of more than 56 branches in Europe, Africa, America, and Asia with over 1,000 monks who live the life of prayer, and work according to Benedictine tradition, in largely self-sufficient monastic communities. The monks commit themselves through vows, to community life in one of our abbeys, or autonomous, priories. As missionary Benedictines, we are part of the monastic tradition of the Catholic Church, and we fulfill the missionary task. Priorities of the mission service are pastoral care, and evangelization, education, health care, and poverty reduction. The abbot president, is the general superior of the congregation of Saint Otilian, and works with an elected council of the congregation. Supreme authority is exercised by the general chapter, which meets every four years, and gathers abbots, conventual priors, community delegates, and council members. The Prince of Peace, Benedictine Abit Goni, is located at the highlands of Limuru. It is the current mother monastery, of the missionary Benedictine monks in Kenya. Established in 1985, the abbey, is within the Catholic Archdiocese of Nairobi. The land where it sits, was generously donated by the late Maurice Cardin Lotunga, the then Archbishop, of Archdiocese of Nairobi. The actual building of the monastery started in 1988, and the church was consecrated in 1991, during the Solemnity of the Epiphany, by the late Morris Cardin Lotunga. The official opening of the monastery, was again graced the same cardinal in 1993. Since then, the monastery has grown in various aspects, and in September 2020, it was raised to the status of an abbey, and the first abbot was elected. To date, the whole of Tgoni Abbey has a total of 50 monks in vows, who pray and work together. The main activity at Tgoni is, farming. There's tea farming, dairy, sheep, goats, pigs, poultry, 
greenhouse, vegetable, butchery, forest and the production of drinking water. In addition to that, it has a nice retreat, and conference facilities. With the events field, and a serene picnic site. About 20 monks, are assigned to the abbey. And some are also involved in pastoral work. The basic formation of monks takes place in the abbey. Currently has a total of 8 postulants and novices, at the initial stages of formation. The abbey has dependent communities namely, Eldoret, Nanuki, Roraka, Kapkmich, and Dilaret. Nanuki community is located at the foot of Mount Kenya, under the patronage of, Our Lady of Mount Kenya. It was started in 1978, and is in the Catholic Archdiocese of Neri. This piece of land, was providentially donated by Mrs. Mary Swanson Sutcliffe, towards the end of 1978. Abbot Lambert, of Paramiha Abbey, accepted the donation, and the novitiate started in May 1979 and comprised of five Ugandans, and two Kenyans. The efforts of our first missionaries in Nanuki, is worth remembering. Apart from formation and pastoral work, monks were involved in activities, aimed at making the community self-reliant. These included, cattle, chicken, rabbits, and fish farming. Today, Nanuki, famously known as African Bible on the Ground, serves as a spiritual nourishment center for pilgrims, from all over the country. This project of the African Bible on the Ground, was started and successfully completed by, Father Raymond Tamale, with assistance of people of goodwill. The African Bible on the Ground, focuses on the people's culture, and goes with the theme of enculturation, expressed in the African Synod. This spiritual center, situated at the foot of Mount Kenya, is a practical process, by which the Word of God meaningfully, addresses the culture of a people, as part of God's plan of salvation. It takes on the approach of pre-formation, formation, reformation, and transformation. It expresses an illustration, of a meaningful relation of the African Bible, to the African context today. People from all walks of life, make their pilgrimage, to the African Bible on the ground for prayer, and surely, all get enriched. This uh, priest has a lot of relevance uh, to the church in, in general, because many people talk about Bible, Bible on the ground, and that's why you find that on Saturday, normally we have very many guests who come here. So actually there are many opportunities at Nanyuki. If we have, I think, good guest house, then we are going to serve the people here better. Nanyuki has a beautiful church dedicated to Saint Jerome. There are also a good number of rooms that can accommodate those who wish to do their spiritual retreats. At the moment, there are five monks assigned to Nanyuki. Saint Benedict Ruaraka community, is located along the Thika Superhighway, in the Catholic Archdiocese of Nairobi. It was established in 1977, by the missionary Benedictine monks, from Peramiho Abbey, who came to Nairobi with the name of opening a new monastery, in the capital of Kenya. This was after an invitation by His Eminence, the late Morris Cardin Lotunga. The community was founded in 1978, together with St. Benedict Parish. They also started a retreat house, a Mani conference center, and later a vocational training and production center, VTPC. Fathers Morris Rienlin, John Newdegger, and Father Klaus Brown Reuter, were actively involved in pastoral work, in the Survey of Kenya, National Youth Service, NYS, and General Service Unit, GSU. 
At the same time Father Ingbert Klinger, a professor of philosophy, who started teaching at Consolata Seminary. Today, Ruaraka remains a complex community in the sense that it is involved in pastoral work, through St. Benedict Parish. Education, through St. Benedict Primary School, St. Stephen Catholic School, St. Morris Catholic Special School, and Vocational Training and Production Center, VTPC. The community has a retreat, and conference facilities with enough space for the garden events. Currently, 10 monks are assigned to this community. The main intention was to evangelize, and to reach out to the people in the Madari Valley, both spiritually, and psychologically, emotionally, and physically. We are still relevant because the same people are still living in the same place, and um, the church has to come in, the Benedictines have to come in, to ensure that we are realizing that mission by attending to them both physically also, emotionally and supporting them spiritually. And this is done by most of our conference, working in the valley, helping us to realize this vision. As we look at the, some of our departments, they are also helping to realize this vision. Because the church together with the school, they are helping to align this vision together. St. Gregory, International Benedictine Study House, Langata, which is directly under the congregation of St. Otilian, is located near the institutions of studies. It was established in 1999. Its construction was supervised by Father Pius Mulbacher, who was appointed as the first rector in 2003. He immediately began plans to put up structures for the new study house building, including rooms for students, refectory, chapel, library, and conference hall. The house was officially blessed and opened in 2004. To date, this study house remains important for the congregation, since it accommodates about 25 students and staff from nine different worldwide monasteries. Yeah, and one thing I have learned from Benedictine life is, especially monastic life, sometimes you think it is going down and everything is crashing down and suddenly it revives itself. And this is the pattern of life, that there will be ups and downs, but that we should not let it go down, let it keep going up. And the, the future now is in the young hands. The abbot is a young person, and I believe with his gifts of listening, as St. Benedict says, the abbot should be someone who's a listener, someone who's going to be able to win souls. I see now the young people, so many young people, which is good. And uh, my prayer is that they continue to invest in these young people for the future of the community, so that the spirit of the founders does not die. Tigon is best placed than any other community of our congregation in terms of location, in terms of market, in terms of opportunities. You have everything here. What you need to do is put your hands together and look at the common good. The Risen Christ, Capcomich Parish, is found in the Catholic Diocese of Eldoret and is bordering Irusui Parish in the Catholic Diocese of Kakamega, to the west. Catholic Diocese of Kasumu, to the south, Kobujoi Parish, to the east, and Tindinyo to the north. It used to be an outstation of Kobujoi Parish. It was established in February 1997, by the Benedictine missionary, Father Matthias Wetzel, who became the first parish priest. He started his work aggressively, by strengthening the faith of the people, training his parish officials on how to take responsibilities, keep records, and knowing the number of Christians. He conducted monthly parish council meetings, and taught the officials and the catechists, how to run the church. The Christians assisted in digging of the foundations, bringing the stones and water, for all the twenty outstations of the parish, constructed by Father Matthias. Today, this community deals with pastoral work and is currently assigned with two monks. Talking about the faith of the people, from the history, it has grown from the number which Father started with. Right now we can say around 8,000 Christians. What is unique about this community or the parish, most of them come from families where we have various denominations. It is a challenge of having 24 stations. They cannot have mass. 
That is why we try at least we have some parish masses. That one we converge at least four, three stations in that area. Then they have mass apart from the various masses in their own stations. St. Peter, the Fisherman Parish, is located at the eastern shore of Lake Turkana, and at the border of Kenya and Ethiopia, in the Catholic Diocese of Marzabit. It was an outstation of North Hall Parish. Right Reverend Ambrose Ravasi, the then Bishop of Marzabit, had on a number of occasions requested the Benedictines, to take up the challenge of bringing the Benedictine presence, among the Dasanich people. <laughs> to see that we have provided the community what is required. I go to Mazabet, I go to Isiolo, I go to Meru, I go to Nanyuki, I go to Nairobi to collect what is required for us in the community. When a brother remains here alone, the workload is heavy for him to carry the services for the people who are around. But if you are, when you are more, then the workload will be less because the division of those responsibilities will easen the movement, will easen the services that these people require from us. Which will be a good idea that we have more rooms for the community. And also, we get more brothers knowledgeable enough to know that we are missionaries and we are working in this area. We have about 10 outstations uh, spread all over. Um, we and uh, it takes about 90 kilometers to get to an outstation from the mission center and um, sometimes you can find people moved from where they were to another place because they are nomads but we have three stations where we serve constantly uh, every sunday that's the main uh, parish center and then selicho uh, and ipete here the three stations are more uh, permanent settled and uh, we offer our services here every Sunday. In 2003, Father Florian went on a scouting mission, assisted by the priests of North Hall Parish, who had embarked on plans to start missionary work there. After thorough deliberations, the Benedictines took up the task, and St. Peter the Fisherman was officially opened, on 29th of June, 2005 on the occasion of the solemnity, of Saints Peter and Paul. Father Florian became the first parish priest, where he served for about 16 years. Today, the community continues with the parish pastoral activities, guest house, and the garage for repairing cars. This community is currently assigned with three monks.
The Sacred Heart of Jesus, Nairobi Priory, belongs to the missionary Benedictine Sisters of Tutsing, who were also founded by Father Andreas Amrein, in 1885. Mother Bidget Akorf, became their first prioress general. To date, there are about 1,300 missionary Benedictine Sisters of Tutsing, in 16 different countries the world. In 1887, the first mission territory was founded in East Africa, after the arrival of the first group of monks and sisters. This mission became the Apostolic Prefecture of Dar es Salaam. To date, we have four abbeys in Tanzania, namely, Paramiho, Ndanda, Hana, and Mvimwa. From Paramiho Abbey, the missionaries came to Kenya. In the year 1973, after Father Paul Steinman acquired the property at Chesengorch, he invited Sister Ruth Grubel and Sister Margaret Arnold and started the community of Saint the Race of Child Jesus in Chesengorch. This was the first mission of the Benedictine Sisters in Kenya. The sisters assumed operation of the newly acquired dispensary and later established a school. And I remember I was the first African Kenyan sister to be in church. That was very young. I was very young those days. I'd just finished my profession. It was very challenging. And we really wanted also, because we were missionary, we had the white sisters, to show them that they, we can be responsible. We can also, they can count on us. I can't forget to remember the sisters who have brought us this far in this area. Our first sisters who came in are Sister Wilgard, Sister Eribeta, Sister Eribeta, Sister Maria Ol, and they did great work here in this mission. As we see the way it is developed right now, it is not the way it was. We had humble beginning, but right now we can look and thank God for the far that we have gone. In the year 1980, the Generalate in Rome sent four sisters to Nairobi to establish a new foundation. Sister Chantal Gusta, Sister Amtrud Warbner, Sister Magdalene Eberhard, and Sister Onporo. On February 10, 1981, the Sisters' Convent at Ruaraka was blessed as a formation house by the late Cardinal Maurice Otunga. Young African aspirants from Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Angola, and Nigeria were invited. What I am to tell all the groups is, can we go back to our roots as Benedictines? Can we search our roots? How did it look like? We mentioned of here in the Raraka community, the sisters were welcomed by OSB fathers and helped them to set. There is a footpath which we use going to the church every day. That is a very good symbol of that unity. They were one and they helped one another. So can we go back to such togetherness of helping one another, of serving in the same area? Having a parish like here, hey, I thank God is still a little bit of the ideal of that tradition of Benedictine fathers and sisters. The space at the Ruaraka convent became a limiting factor to any probable expansion. After approval from the General Eight, the sisters sojourned on a mission to acquire and establish a new regional house in Karen, Nairobi. Construction of the Sacred Heart of Jesus Regional House was concluded in May 17, 1985. It was later elevated to the level of a priory house, on April 10, 1987 with Sister Christiane Spanheimer, elected as the first prioress. The Karen Priory House is the mother house, and the principal station house of formation for the Benedictine Sisters in Kenya. In 1987, Father Benedict Rube and Father Paul Steinman of Chesengorch had been planning another mission station at Endo, in the Kirio Valley, about 20 kilometers away from Chesengorch. Father Benedict invited the sisters to join him in the missionary work. 
In 1987, after erection of the Priory of Nairobi, it was possible to open Endo Station, with Saint Joseph as the patron saint. Sister Heriberta Ahard became the first superior. Sister Maria Yule transferred to Endo as head nurse and took captain of the newly erected Endo Mission Dispensary. The sisters in Kirio Valley would travel to Elderit town to procure the needed commodities and supplies, while in Elderit, the sisters would be hosted by the Benedictine brothers, who were stationed in Elderit. After many deliberations, the fathers agreed to sail a portion of their property to the sisters. In 2003, he sisters remodeled, repaired and extended the house to create the current St. Benedict's convent. Sister Imtrud Wagner assumed the office of the house superior. In 2006, another piece of land was acquired in Elderit, Kimumu area. In March 13, 2007, Transit arrived from Nairobi with furniture and fittings for the house, and on July 13, 2007 the foundation was officially opened as an outreach center. The opening ceremony was led by Sister Elizabeth Bosbach, the then prioress. It was through the initiative of Peri Miho Abbey that the Conference of the General Chapter of the Benedictine Congregation of St. Ottilian dealt with a possible new foundation in Kenya. On 5 November 1971, the participants of the General Chapter unanimously accepted the request of the Peri Miho Abbey to undertake the new missionary assignments in the Diocese of Eldoret in Kenya. Sir Bishop Dominic Mengich, the Bishop of the Diocese of Endoret. I came here two years ago and uh, when I came I remember my first contact with the Benedictines was with Father Reinhard the Botner and I'm told they came from Tanzania and landed in Kenya Valley. A place where I'm sure those 50 years ago it was nowhere, it was a wild place. But they were able to bloom there, they were able to flourish and do a lot of good, do a, a lot of work of evangelization. So much so that today, the majority of the people who come from Elgeo Maracuete, especially the Maracuete, they are Catholics. Meaning that the, the work of evangelization was so intense that uh, the people understood and they wanted to become Christians. The first missionaries in the Kerio Valley were the Mill Hill and the Kiltegan Fathers. They rooted the Christian faith by founding a small Christian community in Chesongoch. The Benedictines took over the responsibility of evangelization among the Marraquets in 1972. For the running of the mission, a kind of base or warehouse was needed in Eldoret town. So, the Benedictines tried to combine such a house with the care of Majengo Parish, which they took over on 12th January 1973. Father Reinhard Bartner and Father Hildebrand started this work. After a short period of time, they came to realize that the parish house did not serve the purpose, and they bought a new one in the eastern estate of Eldoret town. Since 1975, Father Paul Durr was working as the procurator. After Father Reinhard left for another assignment, the increasing work of the parish could not be managed by Father Hildebrand alone. So, the Benedictines gave back the parish to the Catholic Diocese of Eldret in 1976, in order to be able to lay more emphasis on the mission in Kerio Valley. The missionaries had a special way of evangelizing. They respected and learned the culture of the people. Thereafter, they owned and became part of the Maraquet culture. They understood that people liked snuff or smokeless tobacco, and they could tell them to go to church and after mass they could get a share of it, and some clothes. The missionaries, opened Kerio Valley to the rest of the country, by opening the roads from the bush. They discovered fresh water from the top of the hill, and embarked on the project by piping the water system, to almost all parts of the valley. They discovered that the climate in the valley, favored the growth of some crops and so, they ventured into agriculture through planting of fruit, like mangoes, pawpaws, oranges, and lemon. These trees transformed the valley into a green city, and despite the high temperatures over there, the trees played an important role of temperature regulation, and made the place more habitable.
They introduced tailoring by training women and girls how to make clothes. Since they value education, they built several primary and secondary schools all over the valley, so that the children could acquire education. They sponsored many students for education. And the best schools in the valley are those started by the Benedictines. And the idea of education uh, has truly, the impact has been so great. Because if you ask most of the people from the valley, uh, they are what they are today because they went through those schools and they were formed by the Benedictines. So it is, it is really great, it's wonderful. And I'm so happy that uh, they have been in our diocese for the last uh, 50 years. They also built quite a number of health centers, dispensaries, and hospitals. They did all these activities through all the parishes they established. Brother Laurenti is famously remembered for having done almost all the parish constructions throughout the Kerio Valley. To date, more than 95% of the population of Kerio Valley is practicing the Catholic faith. Christ the Saviour, Chesong Och Parish, is located in the Kerio Valley in Tot Division. It was established in 1972, and is the mother of all other stations. The first group of missionaries to arrive, consisted of Father Benedict Truek, who became the first parish priest, and was in charge of Chesoy, and Arrow outstations. Father Paul Steinman, was in charge of Chesaton School, and the health center. Father Hildebrand, was in charge of Tot School, education of catechists, and all development projects. With the help from the Benedictine brothers of Peremijo, Brother Sebastian, Brother Laurentius, and Brother Nomnus, they expanded the mission. The parish grew into a great establishment, consisting of a big church, an extensive health clinic, and supported 14 primary schools, and two secondary schools. The catechists, took care of six outstations for the spiritual needs, of distant living Christians. Apart from the Benedictine monks, two congregations of the sisters, played an important role in the development of the mission. Among the first Tutsing sisters, to arrive in Chesong Orch, in 1973, were Sister Ruth Grubel, a teacher of home science, and Sister Margaret Arnold, a nurse and midwife. There were also two sisters, from the Assumption Sisters of Eldoret, who started working in the school, in 1974, but later left after a short period of time. The missionaries continued with pastoral work, until 1999, when they handed over the parish, to the Catholic Diocese, of Eldoret. To date, Christ the Saviour, Chesong Och Parish, has grown and consists of 12 outstations, and 72 small Christian communities. Holy Spirit Chesoy Parish, is located at the northern part of the Highland Plateau, in Sambiri location, Tot Division, 100 kilometers away from Eldoret Town. It was an outstation of Chesong Och since 1973. On 10th April, 1975, the Bishop of Eldoret made it the second Benedictine parish. The first priest was Father Lucas Angemeyer. The work at Chesoy had lots of aspects right from the beginning. This included masses, catechesis, youth activities, poshu mill, and water pump. The spiritual and the social needs of the people, were considered equally. Father Lucas took care of the parish, until his death in 1988. Holy Spirit Chesoy Parish, was the first parish to be handed over to the Catholic Diocese of Eldoret in 1988. It has 12 nursery schools, 12 primary schools, and 2 secondary schools. To date, the parish has grown to 17 outstations, and 56 small Christian communities. St. Benedict Aror Parish, is located at the Kerio Valley, about 50 kilometers away from Carbonet, E10 Main Road. It was started as an outstation of Chesong Och, in 1973, and elevated to a parish in 1974, as the third Benedictine parish. With the help of the Irish medical missionaries of Mary, MMM, a health centre was opened in 1976, which also included a mobile clinic. In the pastoral and social work, Father Benedict was assisted by, Brother Laurentius, from 1974, and Father Alex Wachter, from 1976, to 1979. 
In 1983, St. Benedict Secondary School, was founded under the directorship of Father Florian, who later on, put special emphasis on agriculture since 1992. The parish has a total of 13 primary schools, and out of these, 11 are church-sponsored. St. Benedict Aror Parish, was handed over to the Catholic Diocese of Eldoret in 1997. To date, the parish has grown to 12 outstations, and 56 small Christian communities. St. Abraham, Endo Parish, is located in the northern part of the Kerio Valley, in Top Division. It was an outstation of Chesong Och, and was established in 1985. It is considered as an example of inculturated art. In 1990, a health center was opened, and run by Sister Maria Ull. The parish has, eight primary schools, and five art church-sponsored, two secondary schools, of which one is church-sponsored. St. Abraham, Endo Parish, was given to the Catholic Diocese of Eldoret, in April 1994, and Father Benedict returned to Chesong Och Parish. At the moment, the parish has grown to six outstations, and 35 small Christian communities. St. Michael, in Bobut Parish, is located in Top Division, in the northern part of Kayomaraquet District, 135 kilometers away from Eldoret Town. It was started by Father Reinhard Bartner, in 1974. The parish has four, nursery schools, run by the parish and seven primary schools, sponsored by the church. It also has a mission health center. St. Michael in Bobut Parish, was also handed over to the Catholic Diocese of Eldoret, in 1999. At the moment, the parish has grown to eight outstations, and 33 small Christian communities. St. Plathido, Camuso Parish, located on the highlands at the southern part of Kayo District, 60 kilometers away from Eldoret, was an outstation of Mokwa Parish. It was established on 1st October, 1998 and Father Reinhard Bartner, became the first parish priest. He officially opened the church with Holy Mass, on 4th of October 1998. It lies on gentle slopes with both natural, and exotic trees covering the area. The temperatures vary from cold to warm. The parish has five primary schools, two secondary schools, and one government health center. St. Plathido Camusor Parish, was handed over to the Catholic Diocese of Eldoret, in 2011. To date, the parish has grown to 13 outstations, and over 60 small Christian communities. St. Paul, Carbechi Parish, is located at Kayo District within Kerio Valley, and stands on a relatively high point covering the slopes of Arapco Hill, it was an outstation of Camusor Parish. Given the location of the parish, the temperature varies according to the season, that is, dry season from October to February, with temperatures of around 32, and 34 degrees Celsius and rainy season from March to August, with temperatures of around 16 degrees Celsius. The area sometimes experiences landslides during rainy season, but has a scenic beauty, with natural forest which accommodates wild animals like, monkeys, squirrels, bush babies, and others. Has a total of five primary, and two secondary schools. St. Paul Carbechi Parish, was handed over to the Catholic Diocese of Eldoret, in 2018. At the moment, the parish has grown to 13 outstations, and 48 small Christian communities. I must say, even on a personal level, that I'm very proud of the Benedictines. I told you that uh, I had admired the Benedictines even before I joined the priesthood. So I went, to, I was an aspirant for the Benedictines for two weeks. Mm -hmm. We are happy, and myself, I'm happy that Cabiche, that is St. Paul's, was the last 
a parish in LK Marquette County. So I want to thank and say may God bless this parish, may God bless Benedictine fathers, Benedictine sisters, Benedictine community as they celebrate these 50 years of evangelization in Kerio Valley. Something about the Benedictines that really endeared the people of the valley, they lived a simple life of the people. You know, they were not complicated. They were not complicated. So I congratulate them and I really pray that we continue in the same service in other places. When I worked with the Benedictines there, I must admire the, the charism, the sacrifice that they have offered to our diocese especially, and to the people that they have helped. And uh, my message to them is that keep it going. We wish we could keep you longer in the valley. We will have we'll have more beautiful memories with you. My message is to keep up with the spirit, mm. not to be discouraged. I would wish they should have been uh, still there to continue their projects and also supporting the people because they were really loved by people. Even the last priest, may he rest in peace, Father Reynard, who was really, really loved by the people. He was actually doing the work the government will have done. I thank uh, the Benedictine missionaries because one thing is that the sisters are still in the valley, uh, in Endo and Chesongo. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, 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 but uh, maybe our brothers, uh, priests, uh, <laughs> they should think about it. Uh, they should think about it. I know it's difficult, but they should think about it. Eh? But I will say keep keep going because the Benedictine spirit has been felt in our diocese. There are many, many people who have benefited from the charism and the, the presence of the Benedictine missionaries. And we want to, to urge you to keep going, spreading the, the good news of Christ as you have done before. The formation stages of monks in the Abbey of Tigoni include postulancy, novitiate, temporary vows, and solemn vows. Depending on the needs of the abbey, a professed monk can be allowed to engage in formal academic studies within an appropriate institution. For one to join the sisterhood, the candidate is admitted as an aspirant to the House of Formation, where she receives close accompaniment. The candidate progresses to the postulate, then the novitiate stage. During this time, she prepares to commit herself to God through first monastic profession. We have many applicants, we have many candidates who want to join us. However, the challenge is we have the minimum requirements of uh, the candidates that we admit here. And some of these requirements include the minimum requirement from Form 4. The grade from Form 4 should be a C plus and above, as well as we we have a policy to admit guys who have never been to, who have never joined, of course, uh, other religious communities. And these guys must be Catholic, practicing Catholic, baptized and confirmed. We no I normally invite them here for come and see program. And this goes for one week and they come and stay in the community and see the kind of life we live. I invite monks who are in perpetual vows as well as uh, juniors to have some kind of talks with them. The job of a formator is to prepare young women who come and they would like to become sisters. And this involves three stages. So the, post, the aspirancy takes six months within the community. Postulancy takes two years within the community um, with four months of experience outside the formation house. That is, we send them to our small communities in Eldoret or in uh, Ruaraka. Novitiate takes two years with uh, three months of experience outside the formation house. And the junior sisters, after their first profession, they remain for one year in the formation house. And the next four, three years, they go out to experience in the small communities. Within this time also, they go through studies, professional studies to prepare them for the future. In Kenya, we consider their, the grade of a C plus and above or C minus or C con with a training. For the training, we take any kind of training that can help in the evangelization. That is, can be teaching, can be nursing, or anything in the medical field, can be catering, can be secretarial, any kind of work we consider, because it helps. 
in the work that we do. Pastoral work is carried out in all our parishes. At the Tigoni Abbey, the priests help in celebrating Mass in the following institutions, Queen of Angels Benedictine Monastery, in Kiambu, Limuru Girls High School, and Cheshire Home. The Christians who are fond of the Abbey, do attend Sunday and other solemn Masses in the Abbey Church. So we are seen as Benedictines, we need to make people hone their faith and live their faith. And this one, we are really doing it because you now we aren't, the, like last year, we aren't the greatest number of people who were confirmed in the parish. In fact, the cardinal, his eminence came and said, but I've never confirmed as many people as this. And for us, our, our happiness is that still, that spirit of benedictines is still there to propagate faith or to make people live their faith. The monks have the following institutions of learning. St. Benedict, Primary School Roraka, St. Stephen Catholic School, St. Morris Catholic Special School, Vocation Training and Production Center, VTPC, and St. Gregory, International Benedictine Study House, in Langata. The sisters of the following schools. St. Scholastica School in Kimamu, Saint Scholastica Catholic School Roraka and Saint Scholastica Kindergarten in Chess Song Och. Besides being a Christian school, there is the aspect of the Catholic faith that we impart to our learners. Not to convert them, but to mold them to be God fearing people, to be children of value, children of subs substance, or men and women of substance in the future. They are an amazing group of kids. Um, we are also doing very well when it comes to just integrating the entire the human formation in the academic formation. Because for us, we do believe uh, that education is not just academics. Education is comprehensive. It takes the entire person. So when somebody goes through a St. Scholastica school, the education they get should be more than academic and that is the pace we have set for this school and that's where we want to see the school go. Here we start our lessons with a word of prayer every, in every section. Every section we, will, we start our lessons with a word of prayer and then um, Angelus, that is a prayer before they go for lunch, there is a prayer that we say um, the whole school says it at 12.45. So as soon as the bell has gone at 12.45, then the whole school prays the Angelus. And then we have Holy Mass. We have the Holy Mass for the entire school on every first Friday of the month. Then every Sunday and every Wednesday, we celebrate Holy Mass for all the Buddhas, Catholic or non-Catholic. Right. The Benedictine sisters have the following hospitals and dispensaries St. Scholastica Zima Hospital in Roraka, Chesong Och Mission Hospital, Endo Mission Health Center, and St. Odelia's Dispensary in Karam. I think people need somewhere where they can find God also. As they seek their care, their healing, their treatment, they need somewhere where they will be handled and handled with. Uh, care with that respect of human dignity. We have been getting many people, they appreciate our services, being a mission hospital, and being also a place where they can find all the fa facilities they need, the services they need with affordable costs. And also they say our quality of services is very standard. Recently, the sisters have launched Medicine at Your Doorstep. This project focuses on alternative medicine, obtained from natural herbs, weeds and spices. Natural plants are cultivated and after harvesting, active ingredients with medicinal properties are isolated. The monks have the following institutes of hospitality, St. Benedict Conference, and Retreat Center in Tigoni, Amani Conference Center, in Roraka, Our Lady of Mount Kenya Retreat Center, in Nanuki, and Saint Peter the Fisherman in Ilarit. 
The sisters of the following retreat centers, Sibiaco Retreat Center in Karen, Saint Teresa of the Child Jesus in Chesong Orch, and Saint Joseph Hospitality Center in Endo. The guest house, generally the Institute of Hospitality, is very relevant to our life as the Benedictines. Because remember, hospitality is part and parcel of the Benedictine spirituality. Inviting, receiving, and welcoming guests, the pilgrims, visitors, that is part and parcel of our life. Various communities of monks and sisters do quite a good number of farming activities. Pray and work, because it is through your work, it is through your prayers and work that change all this place. And then I congratulate them that celebrate your, it's not your achievements, but the work of God. Celebrate and do more even great things, whatever you are sent. A brother, a nun, a priest, any one of us from the Benedictines. Congratulations and may you celebrate that day with a lot of joy, with a lot of enthusiasm, with a lot of, uh, a lot of just wow, wow celebration. Um, I thank God for them and I wish them all the best and as they celebrate, I'm sure when they look back, sincerely, they have done a lot, they have planted the seed of faith in the people and I pray that God may continue blessing them as they celebrate this jubilee. Yes, to wish them well, God's blessings and grace, and also to appreciate for the good work they have done in many dioceses, especially in Kenya Fund. I wish the Benedictines all the best as they celebrate their Jubilee, and I wish the community of Benedictines to grow so that they can reach so far in spreading and evangelizing the gospel. We, we came to know how to put on a cloth, even to have a shirt mm -hmm. or a trouser mm -hmm. or a shoe, mm -hmm. we use that one through the missionaries. Mm -hmm. That's why today, as you are going to celebrate the 50 years anniversary in Elder Diocese, it's because of the Benedictine missionaries in KPJ that many people have opened up and gone to many places and also they are benefited because of the Benedictines through education. Because most of the schools which are in KPJ or in Kajau are so are run by the Catholic Church, which was built courtesy of Father Reynard and Benedictine missionaries in Kenya. We, we really celebrate you and we pray for you that may God give you a lot of uh, occasions that you continue uh, doing the will of God in, in Kenya. Very prominent political leaders in Kenya today who are brought up by Benedictine parties. We have doctors, we have lawyers, we have people of different professions were brought up by Benedictine Fathers. So we shall be forever be uh, grateful to them. May God bless you abundantly and for those who have gone before us, may they enjoy the fruit of their labor. Uh, we are really thankful. Personally, I'm thankful. As a family, we are grateful. Uh, may God bless you. And uh, we hope to see you back again. Let's celebrate and uh, let's continue praying. Uh, my message to the Benedictine missionaries is uh, I just want to congratulate uh, all of them, wherever they are. They have done a very good uh, many services uh, to us here in uh, Kenya Valley, to the Marakwets in general, and I think to many Kenyans and uh, also to many people across the world. I want to appreciate them a lot. Uh, like I can say, all the civilization we have seen uh, in this region is the data uh, missionaries, the schools, the hospitals, the change of lifestyle. Uh, the growth we, we have around here is uh, I would just ask them to continue, to continue uh, 
uh, with the service uh, of evangelization and uh, also helping people. So I would request that uh, uh, this time round, the Benedictines, we want to come and celebrate them for the great job they did for the last 50 years. And I will rally my people. They are even, they are even more than happy to receive you back for that celebration. I'm very sure you are going to eat a lot of good meat and uh, because you are the ones who actually started those programs that actually transform the lives of the people. We, my message is that don't ever think that we are, we are, we never saw. We had lacked opportunity, we had lacked time, we had lacked an, uh, an audience mm -hmm. to tell you thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And I think this time round, we are coming, all of us, the community and all the leadership, to come and tell you a word of thank you for the great job you have done in Kenya Valley for the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. I had a chance to, to travel during those days. I, I went to Alo when Father Florian was there. I went to Chesham Kosi even Endo when uh, Father Benedict. Father Paul Steyman and uh, Father uh, Brother Ralenti, who actually constructed most of those uh, uh, parish buildings. I heard us, uh, I was able to see them uh, during that work. And it is true, the kind of work that they do as missionaries, it is a challenge even for, I'm sure, even for those who are working currently. And it's a challenge for us also. And I think we should feel encouraged. And uh, as our, we are working in Kabuke Beach, Given a chance, we can still go back there again and still even uh, continue the same same spirit. They set the goal, they set the pace, and it's a pace that all of us have to follow. And when you look at the people, they not only brought people to the church, but even Jew, they also contributed to the most of the people, who, the way they are right now, education-wise, even in their lives, they made a lot of contribution. And I think there's a challenge for us even as young monks. When we go to the new places, just like the way, like now we have Iladet, we should go with that courage, that spirit, and really trust in God. And with the spirit of Benedict, we can still do quite a lot. There is still a lot that we can do. Everybody, I exhort everybody, every Benedict, to own this celebration. Also, thank God, I also congratulate oneself and feel part of the story moving forward with renewed energy, renewed vigor. Because as we look back, we also inspire our tomorrow. We are provoked into enthusiasm, into looking with hope to a tomorrow that's more missionary more of witnesses so this i say to all the benedictines brothers and sisters congratulations to us and the swiss stress the divine strand in our stories as benedictine monks benedictine nuns we do so with an attitude of gratitude. Congratulations and may God bless us all. The Nairobi Priory in Karen is led by Prioress Rosa Pascal, OSB, and she is in charge of the governance of the Priory. She is assisted by the Sub Prioress and the Cellarer. She also works with an elected council of the Seniorate and in consultation with the chapter. Turning 50, uh, and especially for us uh, sisters, turning 40 does not mean the end. In fact, uh, there is a saying that goes that life begins at 40. So I think for us it was also something very special that at 40 we had our first uh, native prioress. And that means that we are starting another phase of life. Uh, another phase of life means that we have again to re-evaluate where we are and what are the needs of the church today in Kenya and uh, how can, I, can we respond to those needs. Uh, life is changing, so much is changing, we need to adjust to that change and also to, be, to remain relevant. Uh, there is no time we can say that religious life is irrelevant, especially considering our rich uh, charism our rich uh, um, motto, our rich, uh, what is really 
deeper than Andreas dreamt mission uh, in a monastic community which keeps the monastic way of life and at the same time be active and present to the people because we realize today that uh, everything is running very fast and I don't think it is so much appealing that people want to get that quiet time and you know with the draw and all that we want to be with the friends we want to be interacting we want to be on the mobile we want to be doing things but now our vocation now calls us or our charism calls us back to ourselves and see what is relevant so i think we stand a big chance uh, to evangelize today and to speak to the current situation in the church and in in life as as a whole that we are highly relevant. Our ministries are still highly needed because we see how many people still come to us uh, wanting us to serve them in different ways. And we are also aligning to the needs of the country, you know, the social needs, uh, all that the people need in the country. So we look at what is there and we try to give the best. The world is calling for you know, people are attracted to things that are done in the best way. Uh, so we are also being called not just to do things, but to do them well. Because again, that speaks that we care and we value the people we are serving and also we care for the creation that uh, uh, we, we have to take care of everything. So we are relevant. So I was talking to the abbot and I said, which plans do you have for the Jubilee? And in our chat, I told him, how about if we put ourselves into that one basket and we put our heads together and we consolidate our efforts and we have one Benedictine Golden Jubilee. And he said, that sounds like a good idea. If we put our efforts together, we can achieve so much and we can move as Benedictines in the church in Kenya and we can do best. So let us, this should be a beginning for us to, you know, to come together and uh, put our efforts together, dream together, move together, share ideas and see how far we can go. So I am just calling us back to our founders, you know, uh, main focus. And also I am co calling us back to our unity as Benedictine family. So this would be my key message to the Benedictine uh, fathers and Benedictine sisters. The Prince of Peace, Benedictine Abbot Egoni, is led by Abbot John Baptist, OSB, and is fully in charge of the entire governance of the monastery. He is assisted by the prior, sub-prior, and the cellarer. He works with an elected council of the seniorate, and in consultation with the chapter. My name is Abbot John Baptist, OSB, the Abbot of the Prince of Peace, Benedictine Abbey, Tigoni, in Kenya. Um, I, I came into office as a conventual prior, at the sixth conventual prior of Tigoni, on the 24th day of January in the year 2015 and I was conventional prior since then up to September 2020 when the monastery was raised to the rank of an abbey on the 21st day of September 2020 and then two days later we had an election of the new abbot, the first and the new abbot of the abbey, which took place on the 23rd of September, the year 2020. And I was blessed as the first abbot of Tigoni on the 14th day of November, 2020. First of all, the first and foremost kind of work we do is to pray and we pray when we pray we don't pray for ourselves as such 
but our prayer is a prayer of the church and the universal prayer that we pray for the whole world every other day especially in our monastic order and in the future Tigon will not remain permanently the only monastery here in Kenya we are thinking in the far future that some of our houses will move towards that kind of independence just like Tigon so that we have many houses in the country where young people can come for formation and establish themselves in the monastic setup. So we have plans for that kind of spiritual growth, structural growth and infrastructural growth so that we don't just remain here and die here without making an impact in the society. Because we are here, people come, they see how we live, and uh, they ask if we can uh, also establish elsewhere apart from here in Tigon. So the future is bright. The future, we leave it to God. We work on it today so that we prepare for it tomorrow. And I thank God that I joined this community and I, one of the things that I least expected and even imagined in my life is that one day I will become what I did not even know whether it existed. So as now we are here, I am the one, the brother of the house and we look forward to the bright future of the community and I pray that we cooperate as monks to grow our house together as one unit in the love of God and I pray that we may strengthen the bond we have at the moment so that in all things that we are doing we may acknowledge the, 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 the glory of God because it is for that glory that we work. You don't work for your own glory. What should motivate us is that we should allow God to use us to help other people to be happy. As uh, I quote one friend of mine who said that the world is full of sad people and we are tired of sad people. So if we are tired of sad people, we ought to make people happy and to know that God loves them by us living in accord with our vocation and especially our monastic vocation so that uh, at the end of the day I am happy you are happy everybody is happy then God is happy so in all that we give glory to God